All right, Linda, so this is an amazing event tonight. What's your special connection maybe with Rescue Pets or the event itself? I am the Linda Blair World Heart Foundation, 19 years of rescue, so some call me the oldest living rescuer at this time. <laughs> I have a 100 dog license up in Acton, and everybody thinks of me just as the actress, so they don't realize that I've been doing this for a long time. And they were hoping that they could do something honoring or whatever the work that we all do to, together and collectively. But we are lucky enough tonight to be here showing the dogs for adoption. And currently I have one that I'll be on stage with called Dottie. And it features the pit bulls and all the hard work that I've been doing for so many years to break down the misunderstanding, the misconceptions of the breed. Honestly, we have to spay and neuter America their animals. We have to get responsibility, accountability from the public, and that's what's not happening. We finally have the FBI that had the animal cruelty passed to a felony. 30 years I've waited for that. I've been doing animal welfare for since I was 24. A lot of people still um, buy dogs through breeders or through pet stores. Why don't you think they get the connection that rescue dogs are just as well uh, pets as, as, you know, from a job? Or well, we know at this point they know. So it would be that they have a different mentality just like everybody does in the world. And everybody's very different. And we try to unify and explain we have a crisis in America and this is what we have to do to join together. We need to adopt those that have been abandoned to the shelters. A lot of them are puppy mill dogs and, and overly bred dogs. And a good breeder will always take their dog back. A good breeder will keep the genetics of the breed uh, as they should be. We are trying to get rid of backyard breeders and puppy milling. It is very specific, so um, any of the good breeders understand what I have been talking about and trying to do for so long, and they do want to participate. They don't like seeing their amazing breeds being basically um, watered down so much, so to speak, that they're not the original dog. Each one of the breeds has a working situation, uh, and, and that's how it's always been, but a lot of people don't miss, uh, they misunderstand what the different breeds are, and they want something different out of them, or we're gonna make a buck from them. We're gonna have 30 dogs in crates, and all they do is breed. There is no life. They don't even give them medical attention. And really, in the long run, when people find out, they realize they shouldn't do it. But some people are just, they don't have a lot of control, and they see the puppy in the window. Yeah. So we need to teach people a little more control and understanding. Now this is going to air on Thanksgiving, so what's one of the traditions that maybe you have or something you enjoy on Thanksgiving? Well, I always had uh, whoever my friends had nowhere to go. I always had uh, dinner for, uh, it was an open door for dinner for Thanksgiving. But I then turned it into, with the animals, that I have people come and volunteer. And we put out a dinner spread. It's, it's just on a dime, but it's for love. It's for the animals. That's where the thanks needs to go that we have a place to uh, be able to pull dogs from shelters and, and rescue from uh, difficult situations. So that's what I do for Thanksgiving. And then we'll turn on the TV and be excited to see the show. Yes. Now, you have not only scared your generation, but future generations have been scared from your acting as a little girl in Exorcist. Do you recognize that like kids that are young right now are still being scared by your character? It amazes me. <laughs> it is to have it you know 40 something years later or whatever it is it, it gives it's a testament to when you take the time in anything in life to do it properly and billy freak and the director made sure everybody did their part no matter if it was special effects editing sound acting and that is why you have a project that this many years later is still being recognized as one of the most amazing films ever made um, lastly what is the one character besides obviously that one that you most connected with throughout the year Oh, I did, my favorite film is, is Sweet Hostage with Martin Sheen because he's magic <laughs> and Repossessed with Leslie Nielsen because can't get better than Leslie Nielsen and it also allowed people to see the comedy side of me yeah. and to realize The Exorcist is a movie. <laughs> it's just really well done. Yeah. But there also is a way you can watch it through Leslie Nielsen's eyes and laugh and go, okay, it is just a film. <laughs> well, you look great. Thank you so much for coming and speaking with us. Oh, Thank you. Earl wants to say hi. Thank you. Earl got stood up, so we got to make sure Earl gets some camera time. Look at Earl. Oh Earl needs a home.
Earl. Earl is dressed and ready for success. Okay. Oh my God. He's ready. Oh. Sorry. Oh my God. I had to, no. I had to hop in. You Look how cute he is. In. This, this is, woman is okay. the best in animal rescue. The queen. She is the queen. All hail the queen. I gotta go. I wait, no, wait, no, wait. Go, this is a perfect example of what we're saying. This would have been the possibility of a puppy mill dog. The chihuahuas. After the movie comes out and all of a sudden everybody wants a chihuahua or everybody right. wants a, a Dalmatian. That's what we're trying to protect. It's of no it's of no fault of Earl's own and he's wearing his little Spanish hat to get a home. But why should we have to dress them up to say how cute? Because Earl's perfect just like that. He only dressed up because it's a special event tonight. Normally he doesn't like to wear hats, but he's I talked to him and he said only for tonight. Only for the animal rescue. He said this is what I really look like and I like it. <laughs> well thank you so much girls.